the ordeal of the 20th century, the bloodiest, most turbulent era of the whole Christian age is far from over. Sacrifice, patience, understanding, and the implacable purpose may be our lot for years to come. Let's face it. Let's talk sense to the American people. Let's tell them the truth that there are no gains without pain, that there, that we are now on the eve of great decisions, not easy decisions, like resistance when you are attacked, but a long, patient, costly struggle which alone can assure triumph over the great enemies of man, war, poverty, and tyranny, and the assaults upon human dignity, which are the most grievous consequences of each. Welcome. And to many of you, uh, welcome back to the familiar scene of many prior exercises of American democracy. Thank you for uh, helping launch the Stevenson Center. Although I wasn't alive when that speech uh, was delivered, it has echoed and re-echoed, uh, not only in, in, in my mind, but I think in the, the collective memories of a whole generation of Americans. And I think every four years, among other things, is an opportunity to rediscover, in a political sense, what Lincoln said what, called the best, the better angels of our nature. And that clearly is the kind of politics that uh, Governor Stevenson represented and I think still represents. If litigation was Thurgood Marshall and legislation Lyndon Baines Johnson and demonstrations Dr. King, then the regulations and rules was George McGovern. He changed the rules under which our democracy would begin to operate. He began to democratize and humanize the process. Out of that convention came the idea of a globalization, supposed to isolation in our politics, that one could run mainstream and win thinking of looking at the world through a door, not through a keyhole. Looking at the world through a door, not a keyhole. So th that convention has most meaning to me because what we're looking at in Denver, August 28th, it's right to connect to what happened in Miami in 1972. We did not know how good baseball could be until everybody could play. We didn't know how good politics could be until all, everybody could participate. And you think about the magnificent changes that we've seen this year. 19, August 28th, 1955, Emmett Till lynched did not our hearts bleed. It was almost state-sanctioned terror. August 26th, the three the King speaks of a dream. Still an apartheid, but dreaming beyond our predicament, even though it was an apartheid in 63. August 20, 2008, Barack will be nominated in Denver. Look at America's growth because of this participation. Uh, I cannot help uh, but think, as I reflect on this growth, when uh, Hillary and Barack ran in Mississippi this year. The place where Sprinter Goodman and Cheney were killed, where Emmett Till was lynched, where Mega Evers was killed. To see men voting for Hillary, a woman. To see whites coming to Jackson State voting for Barack, an African American. It means that Hillary and Barack became the conduit through which a new and more mature America is expressing itself. That's a new America. But somebody had to plow the ground and cut the weeds to let the flowers grow. At the heart of that, of that new crop, the new idea of inclusion and ideas of ending hunger and ending war is rooted squarely in the 1972 convention. Now, it may not be the same thing that we were talking about earlier, that way it's disgusting, where party leaders or wise people or whoever they were sit around and say who would be best for the country or who is really our best person. That's passe. This is really a question of entrepreneurship and the convention is simply a part of that picture. The vast majority of our fellow citizens would probably be quite surprised to learn that there's nothing in the United States Constitution and nothing in the laws of the nation that require a convention. That it is a custom and a practice that simply has grown up uh, over history. But the issues are increasingly complex. This is a dangerous, dynamic, rapidly moving uh, world. The news and information is uh, trivialized. People are uninformed. Uh, so why not give those with some knowledge of the issues of the candidates and of the demands of public office 
a say in the selection of their party's candidates. They had the total say in the past yeah. and produced all of our great pre uh, presidents. And so I think and also the bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, you win by uh, addition and um, multiplication, not by subtraction division. There are some who want to elbow out people, but at the end of the day, the bigger the tent, the more likely you are to win. Welcome to the Adelaide Stevenson Center's Grand Jollification. It's uh, from an 1892 uh, Broadbill. It's exhibited in, inside the house. <clears throat> that invited one and all, quote, even ladies, prohibitionists, populists, and republicans, <laughs> to let, to let joy be unconfined. Blow your fish horns, ring bells. Join in celebrating the great victory of Cleveland and Stevenson. Trust the people with the truth, he said, all the truth. What wins is more important than who wins. Democracy was not a means to power. It was an end in itself, a process by which Americans were informed, engaged, and could make sound uh, judgments. The Gov complained at one point that the election of a president was not a contest between Paul Mollive and Colgate, his long, lifelong companion in arms, George Ball, later the great diplomat. He complained that movie actors could someday run for president. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in those campaigns, and as titular leader of the Democratic Party, the Gov commenced the strategic arms limitations process. His new America laid the programmatic foundation for the new frontier and the great society. The late Arthur Schlesinger said John F. Kennedy was executor of the Stevenson Revolution. The opposition did more than oppose. I think my father won even in losing. But democracy is fragile. And a new interdependent, uh, dynamic, nuclear world, the issues are complex. Peace is no longer the only condition of human survival. And so, my friends, um, the fledgling Adlai Stevenson Center aims to bring politicians together with scholars to share reality from on the ground and in the real world. It aims to address challenges with practical responses developed and projected through an international consortium of individuals and institutions. Maybe the Stevenson Center can help develop a better balance in between the representative politics of our past and the more direct media, money-driven politics of our present. The first major uh, Stevenson Center project will focus on media and information. James Madison stated the fundamental proposition, a people who mean to be their own governors must arm themselves with the power which knowledge gives them. That's what Governor Stevenson tried to do. He'd be very pleased to see his work continued and at a place he loved above all others, his home. The, let's go to the topic, and it is the American nominating process today, today where we will spend one billion dollars to elect a president. What do you think is good and bad about it? Hey, if there is anything that's disturbed me about the current uh, primary process as I have observed it in the race uh, for 2008, uh, it's been the debate that has raged over uh, whether or not the candidate was headed right or, or center or to the left. Uh, and I want to quote uh, the words now of the man for whom this center is named, Adlai Stevenson, whom I first met 60 years ago when he was campaigning as governor in my home state of uh, Illinois. Uh, I was so impressed uh, with the the visit that he paid uh, to the law offices that had taken me on as a clerk following my graduation, uh, that in that particular uh, election, uh, I very proudly cast my vote for Adlai Stevenson. Uh, and these were the words uh, that he said about this tendency that seems to be creeping into this current campaign uh, of metering whether or not 
a candidate has moved a little bit to the right, or has he moved a little bit to the left, or has he gone forward or backward on a certain issue? Uh, and this is what uh, Adlai Stevenson had to say. Uh, it would be more relevant uh, had they asked, is the man uh, grounded? I sometimes think that we are far more tolerant of a quarterback than we are our candidates. An advance on the football field through left guard uh, or through right guard or even straight through the center is generally counted as yardage gain. The only unforgivable thing is to be trapped by the old guard behind your line. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to vote. I don't want to vote for that kind of candidate. And Stevenson concluded this soliloquy that I have just recited by saying, "I trust it will be said of me that I know the difference between the goal line uh, and the sideline." Form, but I. I appreciate the fact that Stevenson Center is going to tackle these issues of money and press and really if you were to have reform, what would you do? And then some of us may be wisened up by that process, may be able to propose these things and try to get some of them done. I'm so pleased to be here today because I almost regard this ground that we are on now as sacred ground. Adley Stevenson, Governor Stevenson, was my first <clears throat> genuine political hero. I heard his acceptance address, like mine, given about two o'clock <clears throat> in the morning. The Republicans are a lot better than us <laughs> Democrats at figuring out when prime time is. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and uh, not letting anybody say a word except the uh, candidate. But I listened to Governor Stevenson speaking while I was painting my apartment in Mitchell, South Dakota. I was up on a step ladder, a big 12-footer, and I had the radio on, and on comes this wonderful, articulate, intelligent voice, Adley Stevenson. I can remember that speech as vividly as though it were yesterday. I remember the lines, let's talk sense to the American people. Better to lose the election than to mislead the people. And I thought, that's a new voice. That's a new slant on uh, politics. And I became so enamored of Adley Stevenson that I put aside my biases against politicians and entered the field uh, myself, inspired but by what I learned in that campaign. I'm very proud of those reforms, and more than 30 years later, I wouldn't change any of them. I'm basically a conservative, uh, as everyone here knows. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Uh, conservatives don't want to change something that's working, or even if it isn't working. Uh, uh, they, uh, they don't want change just for the sake of change. But these reforms that we worked out so many years ago are pretty solid. Otherwise, they wouldn't have survived election after election after election, and some of them have been adopted by the Republicans, almost uh, verbatim. So the reforms are generally sound. The most important reform was to open up the delegate selection process to women, to black people, to Hispanics, to young people. But you look at all of the other uh, developed democracies, Western Europe, for, uh, for example, take the Pew uh, um, organization results, they all have shorter campaigns, they all have better informed electorates, and they all have public subsidized television, information uh, systems. They take democracy more seriously than we do.
to see the rock in nomination is an American transforming world experience. We as a nation, through all the rigors, become a better nation and a better people 60 years later.